Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Chelsea from Attention to Details. I have a home-based detailing business here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I've been using some chemicals on the inside for interiors, been testing them out the last couple details, and I wanted to really put them through kind of the gamut. And so I put out a request on my Facebook business page and said to any of my customers locally, do you have a really bad interior, a nasty interior that I could kind of really demonstrate these products for my viewers and so I had a customer contact me he said hey my my older mother she's not able to take care of her vehicle would this vehicle work and he sent me some pictures and I was like I'd be happy to do this oh, I her. love blessing people like this and if I can use products that are going to give me really quick and efficient results that's even better and share them with you guys so let me show you what's going on on the interior we actually I have a lot of work <laughs> cut out for me but I'm not going to judge I don't want any sort of judgmental comments down below I've had a couple of uh, details lately where uh, I'm showcasing some of the products and then a lot of these videos that I am sharing with you guys before and afters uh, some of the work that we can do here um, my customers are viewing these channels and so please be respectful and understand that we may not understand the whole circumstance that would create a vehicle kind of getting to the state that it's in we we're not in those people's shoes but regardless I'm able to help them and that's the whole point and be able to educate you guys on these products this isn't judgment this isn't you know oh my gosh look at their vehicle uh, I love that I can transform these vehicles you love watching the transformation so let's get all judgment out of the way and just focus on on the beautiful before and afters and that we can educate ourselves when it comes to detailing products or just simply see a really good satisfying interview but I haven't even gotten to the end yet so fingers crossed it's gonna turn out I have a feeling it's gonna turn out so let's see what's going on on the inside so this is a 2007 Kia Rondo we've got pet hair that we need to remove a really really good vacuuming we've got matted down dirt this is some of the hardest to clean one it's a light interior so this is really gonna be showing the true effectiveness of these products. Uh, we're going to be using my Mighty Heated Extractor for this video. Uh, I've used my Aquaprovac a lot lately, but I think we're going to need that heat just to kind of give us that extra deep cleaning power. Our seats here, you can see the driver's seat is actually not that bad. We've got this weird fabric here. If you've ever detailed uh, vehicles that have this fabric, it's very hard sometimes because you can get that top layer, but a lot of times you're not going to get that deeper layer. So we're really going to have to let that chemical soak and penetrate. A lot of this is just going to come up with a good vacuuming, but there are some heavier stains. Let me show you the back. So again, we have... Just a lot of loose soil, debris, but we do have a good bit of staining, especially on these back carpets here. I'm not 100% sure what the makeup is of all the stains. This looks organic in nature. A lot of times when you have heavier soiling in your seats, it just kind of gets matted down and you spill liquid. What can happen is then you're going to have what I call a clean stain. You're kind of pushing that out and that's actually wicking. You have deeper soil that as the water dries, it lifts the dirt to the surface. And now we've kind of got a clean stain, so we need to do a consistent clean on everything. But you can just see where even where they've opened the door, maybe in the rain, some of that rain splatter has created these clean stains. So the backs of our seats, even here, we need to do a good cleaning. This third row has actually been pretty well preserved. We only have some light staining here. These seats aren't too terribly bad. We'll just do a quick clean. Hopefully, if I can, we're going to try to do a quick wash on the exterior for the customer just because it really needs it. We've got a lot of caked on pollen and dust. Ooh, I hope that's a vacancy. We'll find out. But again, nothing too terribly bad. This is kind of impossible carpet. We're going to be using my aniline brush. I'll show that product for you guys in a minute. That's going to really help us get a lot of the uh, pet hair out of the seats. I'm going to just show you guys some close-ups real quick. This is our before. I'm not, it looks like, like almost tire marks. So those might be a little bit stubborn. So again, our back seats, we'll only light, light stain. That'll come up easy peasy. This should clean up really nicely with a good vacuum. We're gonna pull our mats out. We'll, we'll do those separate. 
um, but we're gonna go ahead and get this vacuumed up. A lot of our plastics will probably use like a magic eraser or the auto fiber scrub ninja to be able to clean all of our plastics really quickly. We'll probably use pink perfection just to give us a little bit more cleaning. This looks like it's oil based. So here's our before condition. We've got a lot of kind of handicaps coming against us, light colored carpets. We've got this pretty stubborn fabric here for our middle inserts. So we've got some hurdles that we're gonna have to come over. Let's see if our products can handle it. Let me show you the products we're gonna be using today. So if you follow Carlos Serrano from Serrano's Mobile Detailing and Nick McGurk from Hawk Pro Detailing, two fantastic YouTube channels. If you guys do not follow them, I'm gonna put the links to their YouTube channels down below. They have some of the best interior cleaning tips that I have seen, and they do some of the best interior detailing that I have seen on YouTube. Nick does really great videos, and Carlos is just bringing you in right on the field. He's a mobile detailer in Dallas, so he's dealing with a lot of the uh, everyday scenarios that you're going to come up against, and he's like me, just kind of shooting on the fly, sharing with you guys tips and tricks and things that have worked for him. So these are their products that they use and if they are good enough for carlos and nick i figured let's give them a try so we've got bio break with citrusolve this is from bridgepoint systems now they do is mix it up you're going to spray it on let it dwell and then you actually put flex ice this is an acid-based rinse uh, you're going to put this in your rinse solution you don't need a lot a little goes a long way and we'll go over the instructions for them very quickly you can see power citrus bio break contains the the lemon lean boost of citrus salt to cut through greasy soils and provides easy, pleasant citrus fragrance. I've noticed it's very mild. It's not overwhelming. So for those customers uh, that are sensitive to odors, it wasn't very overwhelming. BioBreak also contains grease cutting alkaline builders, non-ionic surfactant, and an encapsulated protease enzyme to go to work immediately on the toughest soil. So it does have an enzyme solution within it, which is great. I love that. BioBreak contains six ingredients that are considered green for the environment, is safe for the user. It's non-toxic, contains no butyls or harsh solvents or corrosive alkaline builders. Uh, and then let's see here, directions. For best results used with hot water, brief exposure to high temperatures through the hydroforce will not affect performance. And then it tells you for heavy soils, mix three to four ounces in one gallon of hot water. For moderate to heavy soil, mix one to two ounces bio break. I used it moderate uh, on a vehicle recently. It did a phenomenal job. And then you can use it through an inject injection sprayer. And then flex ice, you can see here, this is actually a 4.5 to 5.5 RTU uh, pH, which means ready to use pH, and this is a 9.5. So this is slightly alkaline, and this is going to be slightly acidic. When you combine an alkaline and an acid, it makes a cleaning superpower in my experience. And so you can see here, designed for free rinsing and cleaning with all pre-sprays, including high pH products like flux powder with citrusol. This neutralization improves bonding and performance of protectors, reduces problems associated with browning, bleeding, and resoiling, or what we would also term as wicking. Safety is on all carpet and fiber types, high concentrate, low cost. A little bit of this goes a long way, dissolves quickly in cold or hot water, and this is going to help prevent resoiling. It will not attract soil. Its excellent rinsing capability also reduces the amount of soil remaining in the carpet, reducing wicking. So again, Everything that I'm seeing here is going to just add value to it because you're going to be rinsing quicker, which means I don't have to put as much water down. I did notice that when I used it, I was able to just very quickly get around a vehicle. I didn't have to chase all that residue. A lot of times, if you have too much residue with your cleaners, if you're using all-purpose cleaners, uh, a lot of people like to use them because they're affordable and they give you good results. But what can happen is you could leave a lot of residue behind, which that residue acts like glue, and it's going to accelerate resoiling. So add one and a half to two cups flex ice to five gallons of cold water warm water. That's not a lot. It gives you all the instructions for use. We're going to go ahead and do a quick vacuum. We're going to remove all the pet hair. I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like after we've done a vacuum and then we'll get to work using our bio break and flex ice. I cannot wait to see what they can do. So for those who have never followed my channel, I'm just showing a quick view of what it looks like as I vacuum. You can see I'm using my detail brush to brush and vacuum simultaneously. This is gonna make my cleaning step a whole lot easier and very quickly work my way around a vehicle. I started in the 
front and work my way around the vehicle kind of in a U. You can see the other tools that I'm using. I have the Pet Hair Release Agent from Extreme Solutions and the Aniline Brush. I pre-spray before I go after any of the pet hair. That's going to help reduce any sort of static electricity cling. But the Aniline Brush is one of the best tools that I have found, especially for removing short pet hair. It makes it very easy and stress-free. Uh, you can ju see just how quickly there's three different sides to the brush uh, just for different textures of carpets and different lengths of hair. Um, it's just really great at even going after some of the deeper soil, straw, pine needles, dirt that can be embedded in carpet. So I'm going to put the link for the Aniline Pet Hair Brush down below for those of you that want to try it out for yourself. In fact, I might be doing a giveaway on uh, a customized Aniline Brush. So we're going to do that in a future video. Stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe and like so that way you can find a way to enter for that custom A2D Aniline Pet Hair Brush. But again, we're just working our way around the vehicle, doing our mats first, then our floors, then we're going to work our way from our seats and just work our way very seamlessly around the vehicle. Traditionally, a lot of people would use a pumice stone for pet hair removal, and if you were to use a pumice stone on material like this, you would actually scalp it. You would completely shave off a lot of the material, so that's why I like the aniline brush. Even in the past, when I've used a drill brush on material like this, sometimes it can create so much heat and friction that it can actually melt the material. So again, when you're using pet hair removal tools, you want to make sure you're using the right tool for the right material when you've got short impossible carpet or material like this uh, having some sort of rubber or silicone uh, tool is going to make it a lot safer for removing that pet hair. Even if I were to use one of the standard pet hair brushes um, on material like this, especially with it being lighter soiled, it could actually leave black streaks all over it. So again, just showcasing just how quickly we can get around a vehicle when you have the right tools and this makes it very effortless but super satisfying to watch. So we're doing a quick cleaning of our mats before we pull them out so that way I'm not dropping a lot of dirt and debris as I pull it out and then making more work for myself in the back end. But now we need to go after some of the more caked on dirt, especially in our driver's mat. If I were to shake it, you could just see dirt coming right out of it. But the carpet is so matted down that the dirt is almost trapped within it. So we're going to use some floating floor deck tiles. They're hollow underneath and a rubber mallet. And I'm just going to use impact. I call this kind of impact cleaning. Uh, a lot of people will use uh, vibrations from an orbital polisher or maybe even from a massage gun. Um, but I like this technique because I'm essentially just kind of pushing the dirt out onto the ground. We're going to vacuum it up um, each time. It does take some time and some patience, and it's not going to be 100%. If they're not too terribly bad, two or three rounds is all I really need, but these are actually some of the worst mats that I've seen. All right, we got our mats vacuumed. This one, we're going to probably going to end up just pressure washing them to do a deep blast, and then we'll extract them, but there's so much heavy dirt just embedded in these carpets that I'm still getting a lot of dirt when I do kind of my impact cleaning. So the mats cleaned up nicely as far as the pet hair. It's that nice thicker fabric that older carpets have. I really like working with this carpet actually. It wasn't really bad at all. You can see just how well it cleaned up with a good vacuum. Seats really wasn't a lot of dirt in them. We've just got that staining on it. The backs of our seats cleaned up nice using the aniline brush. You didn't want to use the drill brush on this type of fabric because it's so short that it actually can burn or if you use too much rotation from the drill brush. So the aniline was perfect to be able to quickly get that short pet hair up. So now we've got actually an easy task of extraction. We're going to let our chemicals do the work. We're going to mix up our bio break and put it in a pump sprayer. We're going to spray everything on and just let it sit and let it dwell. Just because the exterior of this is so bad and I have to break out my pressure washer, I think we're just going to go ahead. We're going to blast out the door jams with my Dark Fury and pressure washer. We're going to probably do a very, very, very quick wash uh, on the exterior just so that way I'm not working against myself having all this door jam gunk uh, it's just unsightly. I can't stand the fact that we'd have the interior looking nice and then the exterior would be in this condition. So we're going to go ahead and just do a very quick basic hand wash for the customer. 
but more than anything be getting our door jams and blasting all of this dirt out it's actually going to be a lot faster for me to do it that way versus trying to do a rinseless wash and get all of this gunk out of here so interior wise vacuuming detail brush all of our plastics um, all we really have to do is scrub anything that is stuck on. We pulled out our cup inserts, everything here. We can soak those in a bucket. Uh, quick way to clean those. So now we just have kind of our stains that we need to go after. It's going to be a lot easier. So, so we've got our bio brake mixed up into our pump sprayer. I just find that with the amount of solution that we need to put down, this is the fastest way to get it done. We mixed it up per manufacturer's instructions but we're just going to come in and spray everything down we're actually going to pre-treat all of our seats and we're going to go heavy with our solution we'll use our drill brush and then we'll do our hot water extraction but we have it mixed up per manufacturer's recommendations for the amount of water that i have and this is just the fastest way to get this down and just kind of let it do its thing. So we're gonna pre-spray the whole vehicle. I didn't drill brush at this point, but we're gonna let everything dwell, and then while that dwells, we're gonna fill up my Mighty Light heated extractor. This is the 8070. I've been using this for several months now. I normally use my Aqua Provac, but for heavier soiling, heat is gonna give you a lot better deep clean results. So I essentially use two scoops of the bio break into my pump sprayer. We're gonna fill that up with hot water just because I'm gonna re-wet everything with fresh detergent uh, because it's such a hot day that some of that chemical actually evaporated. You can see with the heated extractor, what kind of difference we're making, especially on that very difficult material. Now, I did have to do a couple rounds with the chemical. You can see we've got like some lines from the suction. Um, when I went over it with fresh cleaner and then used my drill brush and extracted immediately, we didn't have any sort of those lines left behind in our fabric. So one time may not be enough. And if you find that you have some lines from your suction, uh, especially materials like this, don't be afraid to kind of go over it again. And sometimes you might need to go over it in a different direction. Uh, you want to also just keep in mind that sometimes that's good because your soiling is not going to be just in one direction. Uh, they kind of call it turning the pile. Your material, your fabric can kind of have pile to it. So when you clean in multiple directions, you're going to get even better cleaning results. So we're just going over our seats, then we're doing our carpets. It rinses very quickly and very easily. That's one thing that I really appreciate about these solutions. Even with the acid-based solution, um, you might think that because I'm putting a powder in my rinse solution that it's going to leave behind a lot of residue, but it's always good to go over it with your rinse water and then just go over it again with no water alone and just do suction, and that way you can remove any sort of residue left behind from the flex ice. I didn't notice any sort of grit or powder left behind and my carpets actually had a nice feeling to them afterwards. They weren't like stiff or crunchy or anything like that. So just some really nice results that you're seeing here. Very happy with how this turned out, but we're just going to keep moving. I don't have footage to show of the entire vehicle, but I am just showing you enough for you to kind of see how these products work, how I would use them. Even if you have some stubborn stains, you might want to go over multiple times just to kind of retreat them. We did have a lot of heavy soiling in these seats, so a couple of them did require a few passes, but that doesn't mean that the product isn't performing. It just means that the dirt was just that heavily embedded. I was really happy with how the backs of the seats turned out. They were actually some of the heavier stains on the vehicle. The customer uses a wheelchair and the tires were actually leaving staining as she would kind of pull it in and out of the vehicle when she came to pick it up. That was the first area that she's like, how did the back turn out? Because I could tell those were the biggest nuisance for her and they cleaned up really nice. She was very happy with how it turned out. This was a customer of mine's mom and this was a courtesy 
shampoo that I did for her. Uh, we ed ended up doing a full interior for the customer. So there was a little bit of a charge just for the pet hair and things like that. But I didn't charge for the extraction. Um, I was very happy with how it turned out. Uh, you can see just how much dirt we were able to remove. But note how much foam there is from my rinse water. There's not a lot of foam. We used a lot of solution. So this is a very low foam formula. That's very impressive. Now with our mats, I had initially pressure washed them off camera just because I wanted to kind of help loosen some of that heavier soiling and just dirt that was in the carpets. It did a good job, but we still needed to do multiple treatments with these mats, especially this mat, this section that I'm working on. There was so much coffee that I had kind of reawakened when I hit it with my water and my solution. I did have to go over it a second time because we did have some wicking. There was just so much soiling and dirt and staining embedded in it that when it dried, so we went over it a second time and you'll see at the very end how that turned out but especially for these drivers and passenger mats these were so matted down I don't think they had really ever been vacuumed or cleaned in years and so you're not going to get all the dirt in one treatment even here as I'm going over it with my extractor I'm seeing some bleaching on our carpet from the UV rays and I'm also just seeing a lot of dirt coming up with my extractor so I finally just broke out the pressure washer again for a second time sucked up the water it did a good job on that passenger mat this one we had to go over again with clean solution agitate and then a repeat extraction and finally I got to a point where I was satisfied but we did go over the carpet in multiple directions to stir the pile and that way we got a lot of the dirt and you can see just how much dirty water was in those mats it was extremely satisfying to see we are all done with our Kia we did our carpet and then we've done our seat I actually had to leave for a play date for my kids so what we did is half the vehicle came back and finished the other half. But at this point, our seats are all dry. What I love is that between the Mighty, the drill, attachment, and then our chemicals, we were able to deep clean some really difficult material that typically can be problematic, uh, especially if uh, there's just a lot of heavy soil within them. But our carpets cleaned up beautifully. What I like is that I'm not seeing a lot of wicking. Uh, we did have some coffee stains down here. And because we are using an alkaline and then an acid-based rinse, that's helping to prevent any sort of wicking from occurring. And I'm actually on a time restraint with this detail. And so it's nice with the fact that I don't have to chase any of that resoiling. It's a heavy seat. Take a look at the backs of our seats here. They cleaned up really nice. We were able to do an exterior wash and do all of the door jams, a quick wash and wax for the customer using wet coat from Gion. Made things very easy. All the backs, fronts, sides of our seats were cleaned. We even did a quick wipe down of all of our plastics. Let me just do a quick reveal of our carpets. So we had some major coffee spills right here. And I did go over it a second time because it just kind of was so deep we had to go over it a second time. We did pressure wash them initially and that really helped to remove a lot of that heavy soiling. This was our driver side mat. If you remember how much soil was just embedded in it, it took a lot of rounds of cleaning. And so when you've got aggressive matted down carpets like that, uh, don't think the first time you're going to get it. But it was really nice having that powerful cleaner to go after a lot of the soil that was in this. And then I'm not seeing any sort of issues with resoiling or wicking. We do have some bleaching that was going on just from it being an older vehicle and just being exposed to the sun inside the vehicle you can kind of see where the carpet bends right around here that goes up and it's sheltered from the uv rays and then the rest of the carpets that were exposed to that were kind of bleached but all in all night and day turnaround on this interior 
very impressed with the products that we used to clean this interior. So here's what you all have been waiting for, the dramatic before and afters for our interior for our Kia Rondo. When the customer dropped the vehicle off, honestly, I didn't know what we were going to be able to do with some of these mats with them being so heavily embedded. But with our Mighty Light 8070 heated extractor, our drill brush attachments, and the bio break and flex ice, we were able to do a complete turnaround for the interior for this customer. And honestly, it didn't take a lot of effort. I was very happy with how it turned out. The customer was just blown away, uh, especially the mom. She was so happy to see a lot of those stains that had been there for quite frankly years. So for those of you that are looking to up your interior detailing game, I'm going to put the link for all of the tools as well as the products that I use down below. I'm going to be doing a lot more video reviews on these products, so make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell off to the side if you want to see different scenarios that these products can be used. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell off to the side. We're going to be doing more product demonstrations, product reviews for those of you that want to take your detailing game to the next level. Or maybe you just enjoy those really satisfying before and after transformation videos. So thank you guys for tuning in and for following along. We'll see you in the next detail. Have a wonderful summer and we will see you very soon.